Hello everyone. It's good to be with you once again today. Thanks for tuning in for these encouraging words together. Here at Friendship Village, we pause during our day, a couple of times a day, to interact with a video just like this one, that we might reach out to the Lord and learn to trust Him, learn to bring Him our concerns as well as our praises and our thanksgiving, to consider His words to us that we might apply them to our lives, knowing that as we do, there is a new sense of life, of hope, of peace to be found for all those who honor the Lord and look to um, follow in the steps that he lays out for us. There can be encouragement that comes to us even in the most dire of circumstances. It's good to look to the Lord. Thanks for joining us for this moment where we can do that together. The scripture verse that I'm about to share with you comes from the story of Hannah. Hannah was a woman that we read about in the book of 1 Samuel. And what we know is uh, she was barren, couldn't have children. And the belief of the culture during that time was that if you had a physical ailment of some sort, or perhaps it was a mother who had no children of her own, uh, I'm sorry, a wife, uh, uh, a married woman with no children of her own, that there must be something wrong with you. There must be in the sense that what have you done to offend God? Or you must be involved in sin. God must be punishing you. It's not a correct view. It's not a view that the scripture advocates. It doesn't recommend that view. But it was one that people tend to have. And sometimes we have even, if we're honest, those viewpoints today. Um, we begin to, to think um, if there's ongoing struggle, then what's the real story? It's not a fair assumption. It is human nature. But Hannah, in her emotional pain, in her distress over not having children of her own, she pours out her heart before the Lord, and she just calls out to him. And the prophet Eli overhears her and is concerned. He thinks she's drunk or something else. Eli had his own problems, as we'll find out if we keep reading in the book of 1 Samuel. But in the end, he ends up praying for Hannah. Hannah prays to the Lord. And in the course of time, God does a miracle. And she gives birth to a young man named Samuel. And when Samuel's of age, she brings and presents him before the prophet and she dedicates Samuel to the Lord. She's so grateful for the reversal in her situation and wants to honor God for blessing her with, with a child she actually gives that child to his service to be trained and raised as a prophet. She goes on to have other children. It is miraculous. There is a real sense of blessing. And in the second chapter of 1 Samuel, Hannah begins to pray. And she begins to talk about how God is ultimately in control. That when good happens, let's bless and praise the Lord. And when hard times happen, he's still worthy of praise. He's still in charge. Sometimes I think we chafe at that. When bad things happen, can we still trust the Lord? Can we trust ultimately that his plan is good? Because here's the truth. God is good and he's good all the time. That doesn't mean that everything ha that happens in our life feels good or feels right. It doesn't mean that hard times don't come. But it does mean that we can trust the Lord to see us through and that his ultimate plan is not defeated by the momentary issues that come along. That we can trust in God's care, his provision, even his justice, that he will set things right the way they are meant to be in the end. Sometimes that end is on this side of heaven's door. Sometimes it's on the other side where justice finally comes about and sometimes justice looks maybe differently than what we would expect ultimately God's heart is to redeem and rescue all those who will turn to him and I believe he works all through our lives to call each of us to turn and find strength and hope in him let me read to you just a part of Hannah's prayer Listen to what she says about the Lord as she's dedicating Samuel to the Lord's service. This is what she says, and it's a longer section, and I've just pulled out verse 9 and the opening words of verse 10. 1 Samuel 2, 
verses 9 and 10. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants. Let me pause. It's talking about the Lord, what the Lord will do. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails, and those who oppose the Lord will be broken. That's a pretty intense set of words, isn't it? It's a reminder that as we purpose to honor God with our lives, he guards us, he watches over us, which is not the same thing as saying he prevents anything bad from ever happening. We should not understand the scripture to say that. But to say that our future, our destiny, our steps, the ability to be whole once again, that all comes from him. It doesn't come from us. It's not our strength. In fact, trying to navigate this life according to simply our own limited understanding, our, our own willpower, our own physical strengths or talents or skills, those things will always fall short. And so we're reminded we don't prevail in this life because of us or anything good about us. Not that we don't have moments and there aren't things to be thankful for. And of course, there are all kinds of people that do good things for a while and uh, God brings success or we, we work hard and achieve maybe our own success in limited areas. Um, but overall in life, what gets us through is not the power of our own strength. It's the grace and goodness of God. And as we depend on him and when we walk in opposition to him. Sometimes that means, God, the heck with your rules. Uh, I don't care about your word, what your word says. I just want to do what I want to do. And when we live that way, there are consequences that come because we are not God. We don't see perfectly. We're not all knowing. We're not, um, we, we don't always have the best perspective. What seems to us to be perfectly right in one moment could be completely wrong if we only understood the fullness of the situation. It's why we need someone outside of ourselves whom we honor and trust and follow. And the Lord, the Lord Jesus is meant to be that person. And so, so sometimes people, they directly oppose God and what he stands for. But sometimes it's more subtle. Sometimes it's just when I want to live by my own strength, my own intellect, my own ideas. And if I'm living by and for myself, then I'm not really looking to honor God first and foremost. And so by default, I end up opposed to him because I'd rather live for me. So the scripture calls us to live differently. And there's a promise of being guarded. There's a promise of God working in and through our lives as we depend on him. He's ultimately in charge. He's good. And if we learn to love him and honor his ways, we can expect the fruit of that goodness to begin to show up over and over again. So that when we have moments of trouble or despair or pain or disappointment, we're not left on our own to muddle our way through. We have a Heavenly Father who sends His Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us, to redirect us, to change our hearts, to change our minds, to, to help bring us into back into alignment with His purposes and His will. What a wondrous thing that we have a Heavenly Father who loves us like His own children. Really, all those who trust in Jesus are the children of God. And so as we look to Him and honor Him and respect Him, we can expect his grace to be enough to carry us through. But fair warning, when we live for ourselves, oh, be careful. To be opposed to God is to, is to end up ultimately in a season of heartache. So today's a word of encouragement. Let's love the Lord our God, our, our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Let's love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. Let's honor him no matter what's going on around us. Let's cry out to him in our need when we suffer, when we're broken, when we're hurting, but at all times purposing to honor God in his ways, putting our trust in him. And whether my outward situations ever change or not, I can hold fast to the Lord knowing he's good. And at the end of days, to know that his goodness will prevail. That's meant to give us hope. We can trust in the ultimate goodness of God. Until we discover it for, her, for ourselves, may we not doubt him or oppose him by living in our own strength. May we take that word to heart today. And with that thought, 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we reach out to you. We thank you that your love is dependable. That you're with us in the good times and the bad. That you work even in the midst of hard situations to turn them back for our good. That's how faithful you are to your love, to the promises of your word. Help us in those moments when we struggle because of pain or frustration or anger or doubt. We, uh, we don't pretend not to have those things, but instead we bring them to you. And Lord, I pray particularly today for those interacting in this, this, this time right now, for those who are carrying the pain and burdens of past issues like Hannah did, shame and disappointment. Lord, um, for any of us dealing with those things that just seem out of our control, we, we don't pretend they're not there. Instead, we lay them before you. We confess to you our fears, our heartaches, our doubts, our frustrations, our pain. And we ask for your help. We ask for your intervention. You, the one who lifts up the weak. You, the one who casts down the haughty. You, the one who is ultimately in charge, bringing about your purposes. We turn to you and we say, let your goodness prevail in us. We choose to trust you knowing that your way and the ultimate plan is good. Help us in those moments when we falter. Thank you for this opportunity to bring those needs before you in prayer. Our trust is in you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, it's so good to spend these moments together. I hope today's encouraging word helps model for all of us what to do with our frustration and pain. May we not turn away from God, but instead turn toward him. Here at Friendship Village, we offer these encouraging words Monday through Friday at 4.30 in the afternoon. This video will repeat at 8 o'clock at night and then once again 8 o'clock the following morning. We store these videos, though, on YouTube. Um, that's how our television system grabs the link so that we can broadcast them in-house at those specific times. But because they're online, you can access them anytime you like. You can do that a couple of ways. You can type in Encouraging Words with Burke Campbell on uh, your smartphone, your internet device, and it'll take you uh, to a link where you can find all these videos. You'll just start seeing one after the other. Um, you can also find them on our brand new official Friendship Village Chaplain Department YouTube page. Simply go to youtube.com backslash the at symbol FVC, like Friendship Village Chesterfield, FVC Chaplain. And not only will you find these encouraging word videos, you'll find the live streams of our Bible studies now, our Sunday morning services, many of our memorial services, and much more. Feel free to check it out. You can subscribe to uh, these videos and all that we put out by clicking on this circle right above or in the box below to see some of these encouraging words from our past history. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.